Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, today is video is going to be about how I made this little ferret doll. I decided to call him Klaus because <laughs> I don't know why. But um, yeah, so he's available in my shop, my Patreons. My patrons have early access to him, so if they haven't snapped him up, then he'll be available in my shop at creaturesofnet.com. Uh, so he has a wire armature inside, um, and it's got really good posability. Uh, so if you want to see how I made him, then keep watching. Alrighty, so starting off with a resin cast of a ferret head, and apologies that it is out of frame, <laughs> I didn't realise. Um, but for this particular ferret, this is a pretty old sculpt, it's one of my very first ones, so I reckon I will um, redo the ferret sculpt very, very soon. Uh, as you can see, I painted up the head, it's got no glass eyes this time, so the new um, ferret sculpt that I want to sculpt will be able to have glass eyes in, in it when I cast it. So I think this sculpt is um, going to be retiring soon, uh, but I'll be sculpting a new one uh, at, at some point, I guess. Um, so basically I've sculpted this in, it was polymer clay um, sculpty many years ago. I molded it in silicon and then cast it in resin. Um, and then I have painted the resin pieces with a, um, just a really average um, watercolor uh, water-based acrylic paint um, and the brand that I use for the black paint is Chromacryl um, but you can find anything in your local craft store or I guess online at this point in time um, and this pink is something that I've mixed up um, myself I would actually like to get a color that's already pre-mixed um, to that shade because I don't want to have to mix it every time um, but uh, for now mixing is just fine um, some people prefer to mix I guess uh, so once I've painted all of the pieces, I can move on to getting prepared for the um, faux fur. So this faux fur I've had for quite a long time as well, so I haven't used a whole lot of it. Um, but it is perfect um, ferret faux fur. So basically I have a pattern that I've made on... Um, myself. Uh, if you want to know how I make patterns, I have a video over on my Patreon for my $5 and up tiers if you're interested in learning how to do that. Uh, so basically I'm just drawing out all the patterns onto the faux fur, making sure I util utilize as, mo as much faux fur as possible. Uh, and then I can start cutting it out uh, using a small pair of sharp scissors. Uh, I usually do that away from this space so I can actually sit down but I just cut out the piece using the scissors uh, in general uh, trying to conserve faux fur as well in case I want to use it in another doll um, so I don't know if I can get this faux fur anymore so I reckon it might be um, the last of it eh, possibly uh, I have a hunt around anyway um, but uh, I, th I reckon this might be the last of this faux fur and I like to give it a little clean up before I move um, the faux fur because it just ends up flying around everywhere. So uh, getting a, a closer look at the colors of the faux fur. So it's got a white undercoat. It's kind of, it's not pure white. It's like a, a little bit of an off white and it's got the brown tips, much like a um, average color of a ferret. So you can see how I'm using the, the scissors to cut just the backing of the faux fur. So you want to be careful not to cut the pile because then you end up chopping all of the detail off and um, it kind of looks a bit funny. Um, but yeah i like to use small scissors over anything or over any other tool um so but you can use whatever you like you can use bigger scissors if you like but i find that there's more chance of cutting the pile using something bigger so with um, small scissors with a pointy end you can feed it in between the pile and just cut the the backing so but you know feel free to try whatever you like to try uh you might find this find something that works better so once I've cut all those out, I pin it first side together and uh, for this doll I'm sewing using a sewing machine. I have been experimenting hand sewing and um, felting bodies uh, and you can check those out over on my Patreon as well. I have a whole heap of videos on there um, of the experiments and uh, for example the gorilla doll that I did recently was um, a completely different technique to this one. Uh, and I'm using just a, a brother sewing machine. It's uh, probably due for a new one pretty soon because it's quite old. Uh, and sometimes it struggles to get through thicker um, thicker faux furs but for the meantime it works and um, 
it hasn't broken too many needles. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I prefer to sew it up on a sewing machine because I find it, it's a lot stronger um, and it's a lot quicker too. So this is what we have once all of the bits have been sewn up. As you can see, I've left the back end open and the leg area and also the neck just so I can uh, turn it the right way around. Uh, the bigger the opening, the easier it is um, and the less damage you do to the, to the pile. So uh, there is a bit of hand sewing that you'll have to do when you're using a sewing machine anyway. So as you can see, I'm turning it the right way around at the moment. Um, I've learned not to leave small little openings because it um, renders it very difficult to poke the, the fabric back over on itself because it's quite thick. Um, so bigger opening, the more hand sewing you have to do, but um, but the results are, are a lot better. Uh, and sometimes I get a just a blunt wooden tool just to help poke through all of the fabric. Um, don't use a uh, metal tool because sometimes you can poke it right through the fabric and then you'll have to sew it up again. Uh, so I highly recommend using even a plastic um, blunt plastic tool as well um, with like a curved edge. So this is what we have after we've turned it right way around. You can see that it's starting to take shape. Um, and in, in this process, I then start making an armature. I have an armature ma tutorial in my shop at creaturesofnet.com if you're interested how to make them or how I make them. Uh, so once I've done that, I've detached the pieces to the armature also in my shop <laughs> um, and then I can start gluing all of the areas up so I start by gluing the neck to the head first and that way I can uh, have like a base um, a stronghold I guess if you want to call it that <laughs> and it sort of keeps everything in place before I start adding any um, polyfill to the inside or start sewing anything up um, I like to make sure that this is sturdy before I do anything of that and I'm using just a tacky fabric glue nothing special uh, it's from my local store here called spotlight uh, so once that's sewn up, um, once that's glued up, I can start sewing up uh, all of the areas. I first start with the front legs. So I sew up using a ladder stitch. I have a video if you don't know what a ladder stitch um, on my channel. Uh, and I also recommend getting a good quality for uh, a good quality thread as well that you can sort of um, put a bit of tension on and make sure that your um, hand sewing is quite tight and it won't come undone. Just be careful not to pull too tight because you can snap the thread uh, that's why I say get a good quality thread um, just because it provides a bit more strength uh, when you're putting tension on the thread and uh, I mean I've used cheaper threads before um, but the brand Birch I find it's it's good it's good uh, thread but it's not as good as Gutman thread um, so I highly recommend that uh, so once it's all sewn up, I can start gluing all the pieces again. So the same glue that I'm using for the neck in the tacky fabric glue. Uh, it's just like, like a clear, it says fabric glue. There's no like brand or anything that I have. Um, and um, yeah, just load it up and stick it on. Uh, I then apply some faux fur to the face. So this is what it looks like before anything has been trimmed. And then I've trimmed it. <laughs> so once I've trimmed it, I can start um, adding some more details to the face uh, and just making sure the eyes are a good color. If they're glass eyes, I just clean it up a little bit uh, with some tweezers and also the paint that I use at the start as well. Um, and for this, uh, ferret I'm going to be um, uh, airbrushing some of the patterns on it um, so I have a airbrushing video on my channel if you want to know how I do that and what what um, what tools I use as well so that's over somewhere on my channel I never remember to link things um, so yes this is what we have once it's all trimmed up and um, ready to rock and roll with the patterns um, I have, have I got a t t thing on my Patreon about trimming? I think I do. Uh, also for my $5 and up tiers. So uh, once it's all trimmed, I'm going to be adding some more faux fur to the feet and then adding that um, airbrushing paint to the fabric. So you can see it's a little bit wet here um, and then I can just end up combing the, uh, the paint out just to make sure the faux fur stays soft and it doesn't clump together too much. Uh, but you can see how much of a difference it made just adding a, a little bit of color to um, some of the sections of the ferret. It really made it look like a ferret uh, and I also added the mask um, 
around the eyes as well. So a little look of how it looks like just after I combed it out. So this little one is available in my shop at creaturesofnet.com if my patrons haven't already used their early access to purchase him. I've called him Claus. <laughs> um, and yes, you can find him at creaturesofnet.com. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram at creaturesofnet as well and Facebook. And uh, thank you to my patrons for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. See you in the next one. Bye!